Welcome to We Solve Problems with your host, James D. Bennett II. In each episode, we'll share educational insights to motivate manufacturers to innovate. You can find this show on YouTube, LinkedIn, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and on www.innovativsolutions.org. Now here's the host of We Solve Problems, James D. Bennett II. Good morning, and welcome to the We Solve Problems podcast, where we inform of the existing technology, the trend of the R&D for that technology, and the financial incentive to help mitigate risk of innovation. I'm your host, James Bennett. Today, we are talking about strategic opportunity planning with Mr. Carl Meyer of Abundant, who is a best-selling author of Surfing Economic Chaos. Mr. Mr. Meyer, could you give us a brief summary of your background, please? I've lived in Houston for most of my life, and I have been helping companies grow, either as part of management teams as founder or as an advisor to teams for last 30 years and so i love helping companies and bringing economic business perspective to help them solve their problems okay and that is why i brought you on as a guest today and that's why i believe it's important to hear what you have to say to put today's podcast into context basically there are two ways to organize your business strategic planning and standardizing Strategic planning means organizing your business around a specific theme, whereas standardizing means organizing your business according to its function. Strategic planning allows you to streamline processes and reduce manual labor while using automation tools to help save time on repetitive tasks, which makes it easier to track progress and identify inefficiencies. Mr. Meyer maintains that economic evolution is the most powerful asset for small companies since they can adapt effectively. He advises to leverage opportunities by analyzing sales processes, data, and profit sources. He also says, since the labor market is declining, businesses should evaluate labor usage, systemize productivity, and motivate employees by communicating responsibilities and the pathway of growth. He's here today to let us know how to leverage these opportunities and more. So let's uh, jump right in. I'm Mr. Meyer. What is strategic opportunity planning and what are some of the the examples of market growth opportunities to capitalize on? Strategic opportunity planning is taking a broad strategic look at your situation for your business. This is particularly important in times of significant change, which is what I'm seeing us go through our economy, both the United States and the world going through right now. It's a a time of very significant fundamental change. We're going from one era to another. And so the strategic opportunity planning is stepping back and looking at all the different aspects of your business, how they fit together and how they interact with the the marketplaces you're operating in so you can find opportunities in those marketplaces. I see. Are there any specific uh, growth opportunities that, that that you could capitalize on? I mean, any, in, I mean, any specific uh, markers that you can look at uh, that that, you could, that could be instituted into your business? Absolutely, and they're going to obviously vary by industry. You know, we've got issues in the labor market with the aging population and the shrinking population in the around the world, and to a lesser degree in the United States has tightened the labor markets. That makes it more difficult. It changes the importance of management. If you lost people in an environment where it's easy to hire, not a big deal. If you lose people in an environment where it takes a long time and it's very expensive to hire, that's a bigger deal. And management, you know, what do they say? People don't quit jobs, they quit their supervisors, they quit their boss. And so if we do a better job as managers, we're more likely to keep people longer and that's a competitive advantage. That's one particular example. You know, we're also looking at 
changing capital environments, higher interest rates or cost of capital, supply chains are being disrupted. So there's many changes going on in our world. And for each company, um, you know, for a manufacturer, you know, the supply chain disruptions can have a multitude of impacts. So we may need to look, reevaluate our pricing, we may as well as our sourcing of materials. So, you know, for each environment, there's a there's a different set of opportunities. You know, what's being imported, what has previously been imported, and what's going to be produced locally now. Wow, that may be an opportunity to add another product line. So many different opportunities there. I see. So well, well, since we have these new, uh, should I say, coming to center stage technologies like artificial intelligence and 3D printing, you know, how should businesses be getting in position now to try to to uh, take advantage of these opportunities because it it, it promises to, to be big. So so what what can they do to to get ahead of the, the curve, so to speak? And take full advantage of, of, of these new technologies that, that are budding out and, and threatening to be disruptive technology. Absolutely, absolutely. They're, those are both big opportunities: AI, 3D printing, and you know we see a lot in the medical space. So there, there's a number of different opportunities from a technology point of view. And with the tightening of the labor market, those are even more important. You know, AI is more on the professional um, office type admin worker level and 3D printing is more important on the hyper local manufacturing type of opportunity. So there's there's definitely trends that allow us to take advantage of you know both of those technologies and, and several others. So fantastic you know it's a fantastic time to be in a company where you can innovate where and you don't have to create the next AI to innovate. You can just apply AI or apply 3D printing or some of the other technologies that are out there. So fantastic time to, to be doing those things. Wow, that's great. Now, since skilled labor is declining and, and innovative discoveries are being made at such an astounding rate, which business types and sizes can react and respond best? and take advantage of the market opportunities and how? I mean, what will the impact on the American economy likely be? Well, the American economy is a very solid economy. It's got some really fundamental strengths that set it apart from virtually all the other economies in the world, including you know, a better labor market, particularly if you look at NAFTA as a whole, including you know the Mexican demographics, very strong. We, we're uh, stable on food. We've got our own, got the biggest food production capacity in the world. We're self-sufficient in energy. We're net exporter of energy. We have access to raw materials, not only in North America, but South America as well. So very strong position there. And security wise, you know, with the oceans and our Navy, extremely strong position. So the United States has got some fantastic fundamentals. So I really believe America is going to do well. We'll have challenges. We absolutely will have challenges, but we will make it through. It's going to be continue to be a great place to, to live and work. For the businesses, you know, capitalizing on those strengths, you know, as, as supply lines collapse and more manufacturing comes back to the United States, which I expect that to continue, you know, that's a great opportunity for companies to take advantage of. So there's there's many different things that allow companies to, you know, be in a strong position here in the United States. Okay, well, since we have te technological advancement, and usually when that when that technology is developed, there comes the big layoff, you know, a lot of times because you have a more efficient running business and you don't need as many skilled laborers as you had prior to that. So what is what what how can this this concept manage to hang on to some of those people and not put so many people out on the streets? I mean, you, you, you have could could you have an expansion of access to resources? 
uh, such as capital and people and maybe new products and services or uh, changing the customer experience or, or maybe some of the things that you couldn't do before you can do now because you have the, the uh, workforce to maybe pick up that particular select. So so how can how can some of these jobs be preserved using this this concept? Well, in, you know, for example, in professional services or administration in a company, AI can do certain tasks. Uh -huh. You know, I've seen it be really helpful in drafting basic legal documents or drafting initial drafts of marketing materials, social posts. So that can save some time, absolutely. And it will certainly, you know, at the lower level of the administrative sector, will absolutely have an impact. But those people tend to be pretty adaptable and you know we can reposition them from one task to a different task in, in many cases. Right now we're seeing a lot of skilled, you know, there's a shortage of skilled labor, plumbers, electricians, welders, so forth, healthcare, big shortage there. So those people that are being disrupted by AI, in many cases, it won't be a huge stretch to have them do some different things and, and move to other areas. But for a company that's growing, if you've got a manufacturing company and you're seeing supply international supply lines falling apart, the supply chains, then you're going to have more opportunities to manufacture here, which in many cases requires more workers. Wire coat hangers is a particular industry I happen to have had some exposure to. Before the pandemic, the vast majority of those were made overseas, primarily in China. With the disruption, now there's three significant manufacturers, all highly automated. But even with those automations, with that productivity from the robotics and all the other automation, they've been adding people because you need more people to drive forklifts and do billing and receiving and all the other functions around a company. So despite the technological improvement with automation and AI, these companies are still adding staff because of the change in the way the manufacturing is being done around the world. I see, so, so, so then with technological advancement, then other opportunities can open up then, you say. Absolutely, absolutely. And the American workman should be cognizant of, of those possibilities. Right, there will be change, you know, and if you're in a particular sector of the economy as a worker, yes, your job may, may change, but there's plenty of work opportunities. We've got, you know, pretty much record low unemployment, at this point, so it's a really good position to be in as a worker in the United States right now. Great, that's great news to hear. So, so then you say there's chaos in the in the economy, uh, chaotic economy. What 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 is the chaos? How, how do you define that chaos? Well, to me, there's two big trends that are driving what I'm calling chaos. There's significant change in in the world in the economy. One is the aging of populations. We've all heard that you know, baby boomers are getting old and retiring. Around the world, we've seen Japan. Japan's at the point they've got more people over 65 than they've got any other age group in their their demographic. Their age, you know, it's the younger you get, the fewer people in each age group. You know, that's a complete upside down of the way traditional age groups have always worked. So that is one thing that's a huge change. It changes consumption because people generally 25 to 45 are consuming. And since we've got fewer and fewer people each year in most countries, you know, Japan, China, Europe, you know, that's a really big impact. So that's one of the things that's causing disruption and chaos. And the second thing is since the end of the Cold War 30 years ago, the United States has gradually been moving away from defending the rest of the world, paying for all that, it's pulling back on its Navy, it's changing the, the, the different types of boats in the Navy. So that impacts our ability to protect trade. We've also been changing our trade relationships internationally. And so that's 
uh, long-term trend that's forcing more manufacturing to come back to the United States. We're actually requiring domestic content in many cases. So those are two big trends that each have their own impact. And together, that's the chaos I see. We're really transitioning from the way the world worked since 1945 at the end of World War II to a new era where it's not going to be the same type of globalization that we've been used to over the last 70 years. I see. So then with all of this chaos, is there a specific or textbook structure that you have worked out that maybe companies or individuals or small, a small businessmen could follow? I mean, with all this chaos, how can CEOs best deal with all of the changes in the, in the chaos? What's the, what's the best structure and, and pathway to follow to take advantage of your opportunities? Well, as every business person knows, every day's got its own challenges and they never stop. There's always challenges. Mm -hmm. Well, the chaos is we are seeing more challenges faster. And so my number one recommendation is find a group of people who've got, can help you get perspective on how to adapt to those changes. Mm -hmm. Don't try and do it all yourself. A team is stronger than an individual. And the challenges are bigger now because of all these changes. We're seeing labor shortages, inflation, higher interest rates, supply chain disruption, among other things. So in order to adapt your business to the changing landscape, get a team, get a group that you can consult with, you can bounce ideas off of, get their perspective. And I think you're going to see, you're going to get more ideas on how to move your business forward faster. Okay, so then you're saying that it's going to be business specific then, but depending on which type of business it is, the size of it, et cetera. And, and you should you should bring in consultants to uh, to help you with those those uh, uh, with these structures. In some cases, it would be consultants, uh, absolutely. But other times, it may be peers, other business owners that have similar perspectives, but maybe they've got different experiences from being in different industries or just having slightly different experiences that you can share with. So that's another way to get insight for your business so you can adapt to these changes as they're coming forward and not be overwhelmed with all the different changes that are happening. A strategic planning process Strategic opportunity planning, as we discussed earlier, is a way of systematically going through and looking at the different elements of your business, looking at what changes are happening in the market. Maybe with all these changes, you can find some gaps that the big competitors aren't covering. You can jump in there and create a big win pretty quickly. Maybe somebody is just not finding the um, ways to get labor effectively, or as a supply chain collapses, mm -hmm. they're not able to change their systems as quickly as you're able to change your system. So those are the types of things you can do, you know, as a, to, particularly as a manufacturer, or maybe a distribution company to take advantage of all the chaos. I see. Well, finally, what are some of your chief concerns when it comes to incorporating this concept? And what 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 aspects of that concept excite you the most? I mean, will America be okay? Great question. Great question. The United States is going to be fine. We've got the fundamental parts that are going to keep our economy going. We've got the population and all the key elements. So America is going to do fine. There will be changes in the way the world works. We may not be quite as international. We might not trade with as many different countries as we used to. That will have some impact on the, you know, the way the U.S. dollar is used internationally. But the U.S. dollar is going to re remain a very, very strong part of the world and our world for a long, long time to come. 
this still leaves lots of opportunities because these changes are happening. The, the, the things that I'm excited about is the fact that change is opportunity for entrepreneurs who are willing to adapt. The challenge is change is not easy. Change, it takes work, it takes effort, you know, it takes thought cycles. I mean, you've got to think about what's happening in a way that you just didn't have to, you know, the last 10 or 20 years have been much more stable. And so life's been a little bit easier. So there's going to be challenges, but if you're looking for opportunities, this is a great time to find opportunities. Well, there you have it, Mr. Carl Meyer. With that, we'll have to bring the podcast to an end. Mr. Carl Meyer, who is the best-selling author of Surfing Economic Chaos. You could probably pick up a copy and understand better and more in depth as to what he's talking about here today. I want to express my gratitude for Mr. Meyer for taking his time and sharing his expertise and insights. And we are honored to have him, him to join us in this podcast. And I want to remind you who are watching to take this opportunity to learn from our chief guest and to strive to achieve their own, your own goals and aspirations. Mr. Meyer, where can all the viewers find you? It'd be easiest to visit my website at Abundant.com. You can also find me on LinkedIn, Carl Meyer. And I'd love to get an email from you at Carl at Abundant.com. Okay, thank you for that. And I'm James Bennett. I can be found at www.innovativesolutions.org. That's innovative, one N, no E, innovativesolutions.org. Thank you for watching today, and we'll see you on the next podcast. You've been tuning into We Solve Problems with your host, James D. Bennett II. Learn more about financial incentives to mitigate the risk to better your products at www.innovativesolutions.org, where you can find other episodes of this show. Thank you for your positive feedback, comments, questions, and for sharing this with others.